Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of May 3rd, 2021. This week we get four really cool topics. And the first one is a drone delivery. There's a Kroger somewhere in the US, we'll talk about this, that's doing drone deliveries. Not really a new thing, but we'll talk about why this is cool. We have a fully autonomous level four drone. If you don't know what level four is, well, you're gonna find out very soon. We got some new Mavic 3 leaks. And finally, we have the Skydio X2, which is finally available for purchase. We'll talk about the drone a little bit more. So let's get to it. The first thing this week is Kroger in Ohio that is offering drone delivery uh, for smaller items. They're, they're basically saying that they're gonna deliver within 15 minutes or less for qualifying items. Now here's the list of qualifying items. At the moment, we have uh, baby care bundles with diapers and wipes. Now I, I have a young one at home and I can tell you this would be pretty awesome and, and sometimes when you don't plan very well. Uh, we have a child care bundle that has uh, counter over-the-counter medication and uh, fluids, so something that could be pretty useful. And then the last one is also extremely useful, which is s'mores with graham crackers, marshmallow, and chocolate. So they would deliver this to you very quickly. This is a pilot program in the fact that they're trying to get these drone deliveries and kind of test them. Now I did a little more digging and I found that they call these autonomous flights. Now they're not really fully autonomous flights. We'll talk about what fully autonomous is on the next story, but these are flights that are gonna be managed by licensed drone pilots. So they have, uh, the company is called Drone Express. That's who Kroger is working with. And Drone Express is going to be using actual drone pilots to monitor the flights and they have also off-site monitoring. Now I did a little bit more digging and uh, cause I was interested to find out if this company actually has a part 135 approval from the FAA which is required in order to do drone deliveries and uh, beyond visual line of sight, I need to add. Drone deliveries beyond visual line of sight require part 135 approval. And at the moment, I think there's only four, possibly five companies in the country that are approved for drone deliveries and Drone Express is not really one of them. On their website, they are talking about the fact that they are in the process of getting part 135 approval. So my guess is that they're doing all these deliveries within visual line of sight, and I may be wrong, but that's my understanding of the regulation. And uh, by doing this, then they have the ability to test the program using pilots, keeping it within visual line of sight, and possibly getting approved by the FAA after this to do it. So. Um, Drone deliveries are not new. We've, we've talked a lot in this uh, program about drone deliveries. I'm still not sure that I wanna see a drone flying around to deliver you know, s'mores, quite frankly. Uh, I don't know that this is really where we need to be concentrating at the moment. Anything that has to do with medical deliveries, I'm, I'm fully on board. I think this is a great application, saving, saving somebody's life by, by providing them a service that would otherwise take a lot of time. So I'll get off my soapbox. If you wanna get s'mores with the drone, then you have the ability to do it now. The next story is this company called Exxon and they have a drone which is capable of level four autonomy. You're gonna say, what the is level four autonomy? Well, level four is when there is no human in the loop for doing automation. And uh, this is kind of really cool. This company designed this drone to be working in areas where there is no GPS, called GPS denied environments. And this company looks like they're using a LiDAR technology for the drone to figure out its environment and it's fully autonomous. And when I say fully autonomous, does not require a human at all, even as uh, to interact with the drone or oversee the drone. So in this case, obviously they're looking at uh, mining operation. It looks like from some of the photos on their website, anything that's gonna be indoor where you don't have access to the GPS, then you can use this technology, which which is, I, I think this is really, really cool. Uh, they're talking about autonomous beyond visual line of sight with no human interaction at all. And I think quite frankly, for some types of in inspections, I think this is the, a great technology, especially really dark environment, like I said, where you won't have the ability to even have a human there uh, because you may not even receive the signal. So you can send this thing inside. Uh, I mean, imagine that somebody is stuck in the cave. You know, this happened a couple of years ago. I think it was in Chile maybe. Um, and, uh, and you have the ability to dig a little tunnel, send this drone in there, go see if the people are still alive, possibly bring them information, uh, bring them uh, food, supplies, whatever it is. This is just a great application. So I don't know if that's what they had in mind, but that's where my mind kind of went. The next thing is uh, from our friends at Drone Excel, uh, we have Mavic 3 leaks. Now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this is not fresh, fresh information. This happened at the end of April. Uh, we had quite a bit of information to talk in the last couple uh, episodes, so we did not talk about the Mavic 3, but uh, what happened is that a DJI released, or not DJI, somebody found patents that were leaked from DJI um, 
we're not sure if it's the Mavic 3 for sure, but they have a different design of propellers and those are downward facing propellers. I'm not 100% sure of the advantage of doing that, quite frankly. To me, it just means that these propellers are gonna be more likely in the way of the shot when you do this, unless you're doing uh, a drone for inspections maybe where you need to look up a lot. So um, I'm not 100% on board. Maybe you guys understand more about this than I do or have more information. I could not find a ton of information about this, but this is uh, something that we're seeing from DJI. Something else that we're seeing from DJI is the Mini 2 batteries have been having issues to discharge. And this is something that DJI is aware of. It looks like the, the batteries, the, their LiPo batteries, they need to be discharged over time so you can store them. And they're intelligent batteries, so they have the system inside that allows them to discharge over time. Uh, it's not working correctly, apparently. So uh, this can lead to bloated batteries and, and batteries that are not in such a good shape and uh, less battery longevity. So uh, DJI is aware of it. Apparently they're gonna put out a firmware update for the Mini 2 batteries. So if you have these batteries, keep an eye on battery updates. They're usually done when you put the drone, uh, turn it on, and then uh, they're done via the drone. So you, you have to plug this in. Uh, I think you can also plug in the charger if you have it into your computer and then do the update. I don't know that the update is out yet, so don't go looking for the update and come back and say it's not there. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not there, but they're working on it. The last thing this week is Skydio with their X2. Now Skydio, you may be familiar with the Skydio 2, which has this amazing ability to avoid objects. Uh, there's a ton of videos online. Well, they announced the X2, which is a, um, uh, maybe a military version, if you want to call it that, of uh, the, it's not a version of the 2, it's just its own model, but uh, this thing has 360 degree of obstacle avoidance, or 4K 60 frame per second with an HDR camera, and also has thermal capabilities at 320p. Uh, 35 minutes of flight time, and then it's built with some night strobe lights that um, are used for the IR and then for the visible camera. Uh, it's NDAA compliant, which means that it's one of the um, blue UAS. If you're familiar with this, we've talked about it before, the, um, the, the fact that the government put an entity list out there and basically says that only drones that are made in the U.S. with uh, non Chinese parts, for lack of a better word. Um, and so this is this is one of them right here, X2. Uh, the price tag is around $11,000, so not cheap, not your replacement for any of your uh, cheaper drones at the moment, but if you're in the public safety world, then this is probably something that you wanna look into. Or if you're working for government contracts and you can't use your Chinese-based drones, then this is what you're gonna be using. Uh, Skydio has a whole list of, uh, they, they call it end-to-end -end data management solution. So they have a whole list of software that can be used. You, you have a fleet manager, you have uh, something to use with your media called Media Sync. They have a, a streaming process that's coming soon. And they also have, what it's called Remote Ops, which is also coming soon. So they have a, a kind of, they're building up this entire solution for drones where you can just buy Skydio and then use it for everything else. You got it. Um, last thing, a little bit of news from Pilot Institute. Uh, we have uh, been busy with additional content. We put out two more videos this week. Uh, we have a video on how to unlock your DJI drone and the difference between the DJI approval and the FAA approval. Uh, this is something that was long overdue. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, but uh, just never took the time to do it. So uh, we had a little bit of time in our schedule, so we shot this. So you'll see a link, uh, make sure you click on there. If you have a DJI drone and you've never unlocked, or if you ever had a need to do it and don't understand it, I explain everything, uh, the, especially the difference between the FA and the DJI approval, which is a big difference. You need to make sure that you do both of these and make sure that you do it right. So uh, we also put out a video to explain how to submit airspace approval in zero grid. Uh, if you ever have to fly under part 107, in an area where you can't even take off because it's a zero grid uh, for Lance, there's a special approval that you have to go through. Zero doesn't mean you can't fly. It means you can't fly right away. You can't get a Lance approval immediately. So we put out this video explaining how you're gonna do this in the drone zone so you can follow all the steps. But yeah, go in the link. I'm probably showing up up here as well. And then you guys can see uh, all that information and, uh, and get more knowledge. So this is it. Uh, if you wanna check out our news update, we uh, for airplanes, we have, we're talking about four 
Flight, which is a cool software for airplane pilots. We're talking about this really cool aircraft called the Strider Launch. And uh, this thing is largest aircraft in the world. So if you wanna go watch uh, some of that information, go over there. And we talk about an aircraft that was damaged with hydrogen fuel cells and, uh, and the pictures are not very pretty. And then we have uh, American Eagle that looks like they maybe lost a bag in flight. We're still not really sure exactly what happened, but uh, so if you want that information, head over there. As always, like, subscribe, uh, go check out our podcast as well. We have the, uh, the Pixel Drone Show. We interviewed Vic Moss this week talking about regulation and how the, the Drone Service Provider Alliance is trying to fight these new state regulations that, well, could really mess up things. We talked about it last week, so we had a longer discussion with Vic. Uh, if you're interested in that topic, and you should be, go listen to the podcast. It's on our Pixel Drone Show podcast channel. You can have a link down here, or you can download it on, on podcast uh, providers as well. So. That's all I have for you this week. I will see you guys next week. And uh, in the meantime, fly safe.